actually a new club from the Philippines that consists of many members here in the local area. So we have Chuck and Ernie uh, from uh, the Frank. From, from oh, Frank I'm here. And from the uh, uh, the global uh, the, the greater global Kalinga. Global Kalinga. That means worldly hugger. Okay. Global hugger. So. So there, there are other e-clubs, and uh, we are fortunate that, uh, that they, they do a lot of activities here in our district, and, and, uh, and we take advantage of, uh, of their presence as well. Uh, we also have, uh, do we have anyone from the, from the Santa Ana Club here? Okay. And I know we have the from the Fullerton Club. So, so right now we have two satellite clubs in the district. We have the uh, uh, Santa Ana Downtown Club and we have the uh, Fullerton uh, uh, Ryzen Club, the Rotary Young Professionals uh, Group. So, um, so we're happy to have uh, them sitting in here so uh, we may call on them to, to uh, relate some of their experiences with, uh, with the questions that now the E Club is the structure of an E Club is just like a Rotary, a Rotary Club. It's just like your own Rotary Club. They have a president, a president elect, treasurer, secretary. But the structure of a satellite club is different. And a satellite club is a club within a club. Okay? A satellite club is part of the main club. An E Club is its own separate entity. It's a club. It's a Rotary, Rotary Club. So on a satellite club, what do you think some of the positions would be in a satellite club? I can't give it away. What would be the first person? If we have a president of Rotary Club, what would be the, the top person in a satellite club? Um, I don't know, top person in a satellite club um, would be a chairman or something? Absolutely. They go by chairman, vice chairman, chairman elect, treasurer, and secretary. So that's, those are the difference between the stru leadership structure between the, the two clubs. What is the purpose of a satellite club or an e-club? Why, why, why would we want to do a satellite club? Be more flexible. Be more flexible. What else? Expand rotary. What? Expand rotary. Thank you. Expanding rotary. What else? Why would you join an e-club? Because you can't have people in and have to be in at lunch or have dinner or... Flexibility, right? Yeah. So you can meet online, right? Now, why would, why would I choose to go from a satellite club <coughs> or to an e-club or to a, a, a rotary club that meets every week? What would be the differences between the three? Cost. Cost is one. What else? Availability. Availability. Scheduling, right? What, what else? Fellowship. Fellowship. Okay. So, do you think that on a satellite club there's fellowship? Do you think there's, uh, on E-Club, is there fellowship? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. On a Rotary Club, there's fellowship. So that's the same with all clubs. What is different between the different clubs? Different. Physical presence. Physical presence, physical presence right? Time. Time. Cost, right? Mark, I don't know if you just but what is a satellite club? Okay, let's, we'll go right into that. All right. A satellite club is a club that is sponsored by a main club. As you know, to start a club, you have to have a minimum of 25 members. So a satellite club's minimum is 10 members. So for example, how many Rotary, how many retainers here have guests come into their club and they don't join? They leave. And you follow up with them. Look, you're all good Rotarians, you follow up with each of those people. And the reason they say is I can't make it every week. Right? Or they say, you know what? Wednesday night is tough for me. I'm only going to be able to make Wednesday nights tw twice a month. This is an opportunity for them, for your club, to sponsor a salad club. Because if you get a whole bunch of those people together, they can say, maybe they can meet for Tuesday breakfast or Wednesday lunch. They don't have to meet the same time your club meets. They're part of your club. They're part of your membership. But they're not meeting when you meet. They have their own leadership. A sponsoring club will also have someone that is on their, you know, that will be interactive in their club. That means you're going to have a couple of your members go to their meetings. And you're going to encourage them to have some of their members come to your meetings. It's more of expanding out to our constituents, to our Rotarians, to our President, 
much up to each each club to decide how much support they want to provide their their satellite uh, but the, obviously if, if you're if you're doing that the expectation is that you'll help them uh, get started help them uh, learn how to do their own fundraisers and, and and support them in their fundraisers so that they, they get on their feet so uh, uh, I would also ask a question uh, do any of you have um, Underrepresented ethnic groups in your communities, that in your clubs. If so, satellites are, are a great way to address that issue. Uh, many times, uh, as Rotarians, we reach out to uh, to some of these uh, business leaders in the in an ethnic community. But uh, when you're bringing them into a club uh, that is where there aren't any other uh, members are very few, uh, it's intimidating. So one way of overcoming that is to, is to form a satellite and, and get, the, get them uh, kind of a, a, a quorum, if you will, uh, of representation, and they can work with your club. And the Santa Ana Club is doing a fantastic job with that. They're, they're working quite well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a one great club. <laughs> but I just wanted to add to that that you know, we put this together. I mean, it actually came out of this conference last year. We were there when I know we were talking about, you know, we have a straight rotor act club, you know, but there's nowhere for them to go after rotor act. Right. And, you know, I just would like to you know, say, if you guys look around out there, there's not a lot out there for young professionals below the age of you know, 30, 
not have to pay for the district assembly. So those are dues that the ballot club does not have to pay, which is the responsibility of the mate, the, the sponsoring club. I'm sorry, which dues are those? Um, RI dues, district dues, and then usually they'll tag on something like a $10 or 50 cent charge to to the member just for their little fun for their, you know, before they get fundraising. So those are the ones that they do have to pay? Yes, they it's have to pay. They, they are Rotarians. Mm -hmm. They are Rotarian, and, and your club will be billed for them. They're, 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 the, you know, the district and the RI are not going to bill the Salad Club. They're going to bill your club because they're going to be part of your club. So they increase the membership count in your club as well. Right. Yeah. So what is the best way that you would think that you can cross-pollinate projects? So because a lot of the clubs are afraid that not only, well, if they're members of your club that now they're doing their own thing and that they, well, that, that they goes, the mom up, pop, right. pop up club is doing their own thing and it's so it's that's where that's where that's where it comes into the point of having a champion from your club be at their board meetings. It might be two or three people that goes to their board meetings or goes to their meetings once in a while to keep us in touch. And they go, hey, we're gonna have um, Arbor Day this week, you know, and Saturday at, Saturday at the uh, fire station and we're gonna do intimidating, which is cleaning up trees and passing out their grades. Hey, can, here's a flyer, can, can some of your members come? And you just, you, you, you work at together and you know, and having the satellite club um, officer on your board allow them to bring ideas to your board. Yeah. Mark, our, our satellite club ended up with the own club number. What? Yeah. Our satellite club has its own RI club yeah. number. That, right. That's correct. Yeah. With, with, within RI, uh, so that they can identify who, who belongs to the satellite club, they have to have their own club number. Okay. That's presenting a little confusion that we haven't worked out yet. Right. Now. Dues well, and, and, and it's and it's it's an it's a new new item with Rotary International as well. So, and, and so it, it's yeah. there are uh, it, it is a new process and 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 we're learning as we go. Uh, but uh, we don't want to discourage the clubs that uh, that feel that a satellite club would be beneficial to their community uh, from going ahead and, and doing that. We're we're encouraging them. Uh, you can be. Rotary is, is being very, very flexible in, in how they interpret some of the, their membership requirements. So uh, anything that uh, where we bring in uh, good young professionals or, 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 or good community leaders in, into Rotary, uh, it's going to be accepted by Rotary. We were able to give them a thousand dollars budget item. That's great. <coughs> They can go to Starbucks and meet at, right before work at 
coffee, like, and go potluck. You know, you know, they can do potluck. It, it is whatever they like to do as long as they, they meet. They, the rules that they meet every week is still the same as the Rotary Club. They still have to meet every week? Yeah, right. That, that, that's the difference between an e-club and a satellite club. An e-club, they go online. They don't meet every week. They might meet once a quarter or once a month, depending on the club. Where the satellite club is just like your Rotary Club. They meet it. They have attendance requirements. They meet every week. But they might meet for a social hour one, one, once a month. They might meet for coffee once a month. And then they might have a board meeting once a month. You know what I mean? That's three meetings. You know, or, you know uh, uh, not a board meeting, but a, a regular meeting. And then, you know what I mean? So it's a lot more flexibility on the satellite club. for that club. That's how flexible the clubs are. They can they can make up as long as they have the bare minimum of a chairman, a vice chairman, a treasurer, and a secretary, then that's okay to do that. Yes. What is the structure of the e club? Do all the members of Rocky and Gordon at the same time? They might have Yeah, they might have Well they they might have a meeting once a week that is a webinar. So they all log into a webinar. Same time. Same time, same thing. It's just you might be in Hawaii on a business, and another person might be in New Jersey or Boston, and one you know person will be here in California, so they can have that. They can have that. Also, they might have on the e club is they'll have um, presentations that you can click on, and that would be the meeting where you do one on one with the presentation for the week. So, what's the format of the meeting? Like our meeting, you have invocation and then flex and all that. It's flexible. It's flexible. Well, no, that's I, what I was going to say. Is, um, in our e club, we only um, uh, get together typically as a group for our board meetings, and we'll do that as a conference call. Once in a while, we'll do a live webinar if we have somebody to do that. But for the most part, our uh, we have recorded webinars because the flexibility is is that I can go on 24/7 once a week for half an hour, and that's my club meeting because I'm you know watching the presentation. But similar to your 20-minute program, you know, 
a hundred dollar fine for a cell phone going off during the meeting is is appropriate. Uh, but not every club. I mean that that might you know cause somebody to to resign from the club if they were fined that. Well, I, I would do that. Yeah, but yeah. But, but but anyway, it, it allows the satellite club to set up their own dues structures and and. You know, if, if that's what it takes to retain Rotarians, that's, that's what we need to do. Yes, sir. Yep, Mark, uh, I'm Chuck Cote, and I'm president of the Global Kalinga E-Rotary Club. Okay. I was at Rotary for about six years, and the reason I dropped out is I'm driving all over, and I have, I have to keep coming back to my local club to meet, mm -hmm. and I would get these guys stand up and say, my name is Bob Smith, I've been a member, member for 30 years, and I haven't missed a meeting. Right, right. And they didn't like it that you're doing makeups. Right. But when Ernie called me about this club, it was just perfect for me. So I'm at an E club. I could do a once a month, no problem, exactly. and the online. So, exactly. so if you have members that have left you, tell them to call us. Yeah. Yeah. We, have, we have two E clubs in our yeah. in, in many ways, I'm sorry. In many ways, I, I feel like we're blazing a trail with our club. But like this is the fifth satellite club that's going to the Rotary in 94 years. They didn't call them that They didn't call them that <coughs> was. Well, yeah. we've started for the South. Right, right. Yes, yeah, so those are satellites. Placenta, so. right. 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 They started. This is your they your survived. Your right. And so when we're blazing our trail, I'm trying to get my club mm -hmm. to get to ripen to survive right. and yeah. offer anything they can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right here, we have our young 
professional in Rotary Service. Yeah. So I guess one question is, so what do you do with those people that have been retired, that they are Rotarians apart, that financially, they are okay to pay the Rotary dues, right. but they financially cannot